guys, today I'm gonna go over my favorite pencils to use. Okay, so I use about now six pencils that I tend to use repetitively. Um, I'm gonna start with these three, and these are pretty well known. Uh, the Palomino Blackwing, we have a 602, and the Pearl. Okay, so originally, um, I can't remember the name of the company, but you can Google like Blackwing Palomino pencils. It's like um, they've got a cult following, and these get really, really nice, dark, luscious uh, values. And this is your lightest, your mid, and your darkest. Okay, so one of the animators that um, is really well known for using these, I believe, is Chuck Jones. And Chuck Jones was an animator for um, like Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny, and so he would only use these pencils to draw with. Um, it got to a point where they stopped producing these because the machine that crimps these, I guess, broke or whatever, and they couldn't afford to get a new one, or maybe they couldn't even make those machines anymore. So at the time they stopped making them and people were hoarding these pencils. And then they go to auction and they could sell them for like $600 for a pencil. But you get really great values out of these pencils. I find that these are a little bit too soft for me, so I need to do um, a lighter pencil. So I started, um, I just got this in a set of pens, and this is a 4H. You see that? It's a 4H, so I like a lighter pencil for drawing for these light lines so that when I go over them, I can go over with those darker values. So this is a great sketching light pencil because otherwise I just get really too dark. Even with the pearl, uh, my lines I feel like are just too dark. So those four are the actual pencils. These two pencils, um, I saw a video, or maybe it was a podcast, and um, it was from SVS Learns, and Lee White and Jake Parker uh, recommended these pencils. I really like these. Um, these are the Prismacolor Color Race. I have the Indigo Blue and Tuscan Red. So what's great about these pencils is that you do your preliminary sketches, like sometimes I'll use these or I'll use the 4H um, pencil um, because then it, it just, it's not going to smear. I do like that. So if I want to go back over it with values and darker lines um, where this even 4H might smear a little bit. So, and then I can go over it and go over it really um, with the darker values. So both great. They erase. So that's really nice color pencils that actually erase. So great. Okay, so what I'm doing for my warm-up this morning is I am I drew this mouse right here. This is an earlier study, and so I wanted a much more realistic mouse. And so now I'm kind of playing around with it, and I'm doing these little character sketches because now I want to kind of cartoonize or whatever. I mean, stylize this mouse to be more cartoony and a little bit more cuter. So I wanted to show you how do I go from this to this. I think students often go, I want to immediately go to this, and why would I even have to do this, okay? So why would you start with something more realistic? And I find when I'm teaching, um, you know, we love to copy what we were familiar with, and that's what really got me into drawing. I would copy, like, all these cartoon characters, and then I didn't really realize that these cartoon characters, animators, and especially animation, they're usually, they're very good draw, uh, drawing skills. They're excellent draftsmen if you're an animator um, because you have to really do a lot of different uh, variety of poses. So a lot of times, you know, they're doing character sketches. They're looking at the actual animals. They're even watching videos, I found. That was a really awesome tip. They'll watch videos of animals moving, and then you're more likely to get correct anatomy. So starting with this helps you understand, like, well, what is the anatomy of a mouse? Would a mouse's arms or legs, what, what still gives it that sense of reality, that it's still situated in some kind of real, real world, but then you're kind of playing by your own rules, because obviously the mouse wouldn't be standing up and talking and stuff like that. So... I'll go ahead and do something that's much more realistic. Um, I don't have any pet mouse. I didn't, I didn't watch videos for this one. I did start looking at some reference photos. And then um, I'm going to show you how I start stylizing that mouse. And uh, one of my tips, I'm going to say, and other illustrators will say this, start looking at how other 
artists treat that subject matter. It's not that I'm copying. I start looking and seeing like, you know, Mickey Mouse, Famous Mouse, I like the bigger ears. I, that's just me personally. I mean, the ears are not really quite that rounded or as big on a real mouse, um, but I like the rounded ears. They're just a little bit more cute. So finding out what you like and pulling from that. I also, one of my things is I don't like really tiny eyes on animals. I don't like, that's just me of personal preference. The dots for the eyes are cute, but I kind of was like, well, you know what? I kind of like having it more like a mouse's real, you know, eye. So I get to pick and choose. Okay. I'm going to have to do it on this um, white sheet of paper. So I'm going to get this out of the way and show you how I would go about it. I'm gonna use my Tuscan Red because I think it'll show up better than the lighter pencil in the video. Okay, so I had to decide like, kind of after I drew, I kinda of wanted to say how big is this mouse and how am I gonna decide my proportion? So I did about two and a half. I think this is helpful to do like really thinking about proportions. So you kind of, if you want to draw something consistently, um, I even tell students like do line paper. Line notebook paper is really awesome. They usually have plenty of that. And so when you have line notebook paper and you're developing a character and you kind of want it consistently when you're doing what they call turnarounds, um, it's really helpful to have that line notebook paper. Nobody really cares that, you know, you're just doing a study. So there's always preliminary work whenever you're dealing with art. Um, I think people don't realize when they see these gorgeous pieces of artwork on Instagram, like all the work, all the sketching, maybe all the studies that went into it. It's really a process and getting to that end result, it was a lot of hard work. Okay, so I will say, hey, I know that's how I'm going to break up the body and that's really helpful. Okay, so line notebook paper is a great... Uh, tip to go with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and think about doing one circle and then you can vary because the proportions idea is, you know, I did the circle because it kind of reminds me of the head of the mouse. So, um, and then I know like I'm going to do a circle for the head and then I know for me, I like it when the that curve of the head and then I'm going to just connect the two. There's still more to that, but then I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know, want the ear big. Um, the ear's going to be a little bit turned. It's going to be smaller because it's further away from us. Um, they have an inner portion of their ear. And then I'm going to go ahead and do like a little small half circle. Okay, noses, going to just make a little line right there. It's just like a little V. Okay, then I'm going to decide I like the eye be about right here and so like I said okay the next it's gonna be a circle and a half if I know that this is one and then a half I'm not gonna go any but below approximately that line I could go a little bit but I'm just gonna kind of keep it average so I know I'm gonna do a circle here I know that's a circle here then it's like kind of like a peanut I'm just gonna connect the two together I think about when you're drawing like characters, it's that consistency. That's probably the hardest thing, you know, how do I stay consistent? So these little things are gonna help you out with that. And I wanna think about, after I get that peanut shape, the legs, okay, so a mouse's legs, they kind of are tucked and it's because I have this weird bone structure like I did some skeletal uh, drawings of a guinea pig and it's this weird so they're really up tight and close and then I'm gonna make the little triangle feet because I think that'll look but and maybe with this one it's gonna be turned like maybe he's because he's kind of leaning this way so I'm gonna make that foot a little bit longer all right, then his arms, I want to think about what, I, maybe he's turning his arms, like he's bending them. So they have to attach to the body. And then I like, okay, this is just me personally, you know, you, you choose to 
do whatever, but I like the tiny hands. I like these small, like you could barely, because I just like that, so he's doing kind of a muscle pose. And you're allowed to race, so, you know, know that he's going to have, have some connections between it, like an elbow, so I want to indicate that. But I like small hands. Your, your hands, you might like bigger. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just deciding what you prefer. And so I'm going to say he's got these tiny little fists sticking up. And then his tail. So the tail... I might actually lower this. I probably would lower this. I kind of like it when they got shorter legs. I wasn't paying attention. So these are things you do when you learn and you're doing. And because of this lean here, I think I want his tail curling to emphasize that he's going that way. And so if you put the tail on this side, it, it emphasizes looking that way. I'm not saying you have to do it that way, but you can play around with it. See what you like. Okay. And I probably narrow this down too a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to finish off the eye, and like I said, I like, and it's a side view, so I don't want to, I want to make it look more like it's, like when we look at people's profiles and stuff like that, it's not going to be as much of a football. It's going to be a little bit of a fatter football. Um, I, I love eyebrows, okay? Love adding eyebrows, because I've seen other illustrators, you know, if you're doing something that's, character driven the eyebrows really emphasize the look and expression of their faces so adding eyebrows and deciding how high you like your eyebrows is is really a good idea too so now got the eyebrows you know I'm gonna have three little lashes I'm gonna add three little dots I always noticed like Beatrice Fodder she'll put like little lines here and she would always do like three whiskers one so pulling from what other illustrators and artists have done, I don't think there's anything wrong. I mean, this looks different than what Beatrice Potter would draw for a mouse. I just pulled certain things that I like from her work. And then if I want to get more detailed, I can go ahead and say, you know what? I want to do a little hair here inside the ear here. Maybe bring this down, make it look more connected maybe some little fuzz I probably would bring this a little bit lower I think I went to I mean bring this up because I think I went too low and so going back to my measurements I could go back and just measure one two and still a half that's better that's a little it was a little bit low so practicing and uh, working on how you can design a character is really not that difficult. Think about, so my main tips for this is, so this is a little re recap. Okay. Draw something, if it's something that's real that you could find, I would draw an actual, more of a realistic drawing of it. You can base it on a photo, you can watch videos of it, that's really helpful. Um, then start looking at what other, how art, other artists um, treat that subject matter. Um, then think about how you can break it down into some basic shapes and think about your proportions. So if you want to keep things looking consistent, uh, line notebook paper, that's a good tip. It's really cheap. You don't need a sketchbook. Have those proportions there so you can always refer to them. And then taking all the things that you've learned from looking at other people's artwork, how can you distill it into your own creative idea? Okay, so you take the best things or the things that you like and then transform it into your own artwork and illustration. So that's just to help you out. Um, good luck drawing, good luck researching, and I will put a link in the description box below about some more of the history of the um, Black Queen Palomino pencils that I told you about earlier. 
um, but yeah, keep drawing and uh, good luck.